Perhaps. I haven't done this in a minute. The only reason why I'm doing it is because I'm bringing you a review today of this movie called Tales from the Hood 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> I can't help myself. No, it's a, it's a movie. Uh, it came out earlier this year by Spike Lee, and uh, you know, you're going to find out whether or not I liked it here in a second. I'm, I'm waiting until this gets over with because, I mean, I haven't done this in a while. Uh, the John and Wayne Show is really not a thing. It's more like, do I want to like talk good about something or bad about something? So... You know me, I'm a real positive guy. <laughs> Anyways, enjoy the uh, the review, and like I said, uh, back in the back in the other deals I did, it's Happy New Year. Today is Saturday, December 29th, and go uh, go Cowboys. Um, I just I was just on Netflix. I'm gonna get down here to where I can actually. Oh, sorry, that was kind of loud. I mean, this is the first, the, the uh, you know, first time I've done this in a while, like I said a second ago. And it's not a big deal. It really isn't. Like, the, uh, the climate is different now. And that's fine. And the deal is, like, I mean, I wanted to like this movie. I really did. Um, I mean, I'm not exactly sure how to, to talk about this. I saw it. And I was like, okay, this looks pretty cool. Because I remember the first Tales from the Hood, right? It had that one guy in it. It was from Half-Baked. Keep him be! I don't even know his name. But he was the, you know, he was the, the uh... He was the drug dealer, right? And he was telling Dave Chappelle and them what to fucking do. And, uh, you know, that was... He was good, right? And he wasn't in this movie. I don't think. I, I turned the shit off after probably... It was about maybe two-thirds through the first, um... The first tale, if you will. And, I don't know, it was, I mean, I understand that there's a racial divide in this country, and that's unfortunate. It really is. It sucks. And for me, as a mostly white American male, you know, middle age almost, I just turned, I'm over the hill, I'll be 41 next month. It's like one of those deals, it's like, I've seen, I can understand where the, where the younger generation is like, fuck it, and the older generation is like, fuck you. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? And then you got Spike Lee, who's making this movie, and he has good intentions. I really think that Mr. Lee has good intentions. He's no Stan Lee. But, uh, no, Stan, Stan Lee is old. He's dead now, but he was old as the hills, and everyone loved him. No one's going to sit around and go, oh, Spike Lee, yeah, I love him. No, he's, he's if you can say black person, can't be racist. Some people say no. Some people say yes. I think if you can say, if you can call, like, I almost said a spade, a spade, that's terrible. But if you, if you can, like, that's not what that means, by the way. Uh, if you can say one person, like, one race can be racist, another one can't be racist, I, then good for you. But I think that if you can be racist as a white person, you can also be racist as a black person. And this is how I feel about Spike Lee. I feel like he made this movie as a you know, big middle finger to white people. Because the first scene... Well, whatever, they bring in this dude to this thing, uh, he's making all these robots or whatever, like, he, he owns all this stuff, uh, like, private prisons and stuff, which is a big deal in the United States. Big money maker, and it's like, oh, yeah, and the the writing is terrible. He's like, oh, yeah, all these black people, all your kind, and all these other little fucking things, I'm like, okay, I'll let this slide, that's shitty, but okay. So, yeah, okay, the guy that's running, that's going to do the thing, he's really racist, white, old guy. He looks like Jerry Jones, right? Without all the face work <laughs> and younger. Um, okay, that's fine. I like the guy who's playing the, the main storyteller. I like that guy. He's cool. I don't know his name, but he's a badass. He's been around for years. Okay. I'm not going to give away, trust me, it's not a spoiler alert because I had to turn this shit off. And if, I'm sure the rest of the stories, if they were written by different people, they might be okay. But I rarely turn a film off. It's got to be shit. By the way, this got 4.4 out of 10 on uh, IMDb. I looked it up a second ago just to see. <clears throat> yeah, that's not good. That's not even 50%. <laughs> that's failing. <laughs> For all you uh, mathematicians out there, 59 and below is fail. That's an F. Well, back in my day, it was an F. Back in my day, you got an F for that. 44% is F. 
Um, and I didn't know this going in. I was really looking forward to, like, the original Tell Tales from the Hood was pretty dope. Anyways, the first story, uh, you have this, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the race card because so does Spike Lee. You got a white girl and a black girl, super white girl, super black girl. They go in. The black girl is like, oh, I want to leave. They went to this uh, thing called what was it called? I was like, oh, okay, it's, a, it's some kind of a Negro museum or something. I can't remember. There was a word. For it. it was like a word. It basically was like this is a Negro museum with an E. And you go inside and it's all this racist shit, like little black sambo posters and all these dolls and such shit. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. I like a good history lesson. Let's do this. And they're like looking around. They're making fun of stuff. And, you know, you got this door that looks like a big black face thing. The big black, you know, the big white teeth and the red lips. And it's a doorway, right? That's how you get in there. Ha, 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 whatever. Um, great. It's, it's history, right? This shit existed. It's not a good thing. Trust me, I'm not making light of it. I think that Spike Lee and his stupidity made it light of the situation or of history. Like it's like it's one thing to talk about history, it's another thing for history to repeat its fucking self. And I feel like this movie is history repeating itself on the other side of the aisle. You're trying to get back the white man. And I'm really getting off subject. But anyways, um that's that's just how I feel about that shit because it's just like I turned it off because okay. Let me let me let me stop. I'm getting, I'm, I'm already thinking ahead, but, like, they go in there, and they're looking around, like I said, and then there's, there's this doll, I can't, Google, Google, or something, Googie, I can't remember, it was some kind of racist term, and so they're like, oh, man, there's this doll, and uh, she's like, oh, I want to, she apparently collects these fucking things, they're like little blackface doll things or something, and, uh, like, she collects them, she's like, oh, yeah, I have a collection, this white girl, and it's like, oh, I have these collections and stuff. And uh, the guy, the guy that's in there, who's giving him kind of a bit of a tour, being an asshole, but he's making sense, and I'm on board. I'm like, this makes sense. I like where this is going. And so she's like, I want to buy it from you. I'll give you 800 bucks. And he's like, No, nah, suck a dick, bitch. And she's like, Oh, okay. She, I mean, that's not what he said, but he's like, I bet people come in and offer me thousands of dollars for this shit, and, and I ain't doing it. And she's like, Okay, whatever. Long story short, they leave because, you know, they have to leave. <laughs> the guy said go. So they leave and they come back with uh, the white girl's brother, right? So you got two white people. And apparently the white guy has been fucking the black chick, right? Okay, that's fine. Now the black chick's brother is fucking the white girl. <laughs> we never see him. He didn't. He's probably incarcerated or something. <laughs> I think that's the message. I'm not even trying to be an asshole. But, I mean, that's the message I've been given. Is that he's off doing something else. So, uh, and I'm, you know what? Maybe he's off <laughs> going to Harvard or something. Whatever. They're making it sound like black people are pieces of shit. White people are big, bigger pieces of shit. We all suck. So I don't understand the message. Because later, like I said, they go back to the goddamn place with the white guy who's apparently a criminal. He's a white guy. He looks like Seth Green. It's like <laughs> Seth Green couldn't fucking fight his way out of a wet paper bag probably. I mean, when it comes to breaking into shit. Uh, I mean, why would he? He's rich, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I love Seth Green. Um, so yeah, they go into this fucking place again in the middle of the night. And he breaks in. He just basically opens the door. <laughs> He's like, "Oh yeah, I'm the shit." And they're both like, "Oh yeah, this guy, this my brother is a felon." And then there's a little jokes like, "Oh yeah, I fell into your pussy last night" or something like that. I'm just like, "This is fucking stupid." So I'm like, "All right, let's see what happens." So they go into the store. And she finds the little doll. And by the way, they're not being quiet. The door slams and all this shit goes on. It's like, you realize that fucking dude that runs this joint is upstairs, probably. Good thing he's got an apnea mask on. And he left the late show on. And he's probably a little bit deaf. So you're lucky that you're... And they're making all this bracket and shit and whatever else. And so she goes to get that goo-goo doll or whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> it's not a goo-goo doll. I can't remember what it's called. The black face doll in glass case, right? And this bitch, the, other, the black chick, she gets up against the whipping post, and she's holding on to it. And the white guy grabs a fucking whip, and he's just like, oh, I'm going to beat that ass and beat it up later or something. I'm just like, man, you're losing me? Ha ha. I understand the racist jokes. But this is not acceptable. <laughs> I mean, if a, white, if a white person made this movie today, he would be crucified. <laughs> he would never work in this town again. Uh, <laughs> but it's Spike Lee, so he gets away from murder, apparently. Literally. Because a little bit later... The doll, they, he, somehow this bitch drops the glass case. Maybe she slips on a banana pill. I don't fucking know. But, yeah, like, it fucking just 
breaks and the doll's gone. And she's like looking everywhere for her. Oh, where's the doll? Where did it go? <laughs> and then the 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 racist people, the other racist people, the white girl or the black girl and the white guy, they pick up these little books about I don't know, ten little whatever the fuck. It's like ten little Indians, but it's like they use the N word. I'm not gonna say it. Um <laughs> it's funny though. I want to because who cares? You know, this movie's made me fucking hate shit like this. It's like I understand you got a message. Fuck you, you know? Uh, I wanted to be entertained. This is not entertaining. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, then I'm thinking at this point, you know, it's still a horror movie, quote unquote. I'm like, all right, I like a good scary movie. Scare me. And by the way, nothing in this movie is scary. It's just retarded. The writing is fucking shit. The uh, acting is even worse. 44% out of 100. <laughs> According to IMDb. Um, so yeah, she looks for the doll. She finds it. And she's hugging it. She's like, oh. Googly moogly or whatever the fuck things called. I can't even remember. It's a racist term, whatever it is. Um, and then something happens, it's gone. Next thing you know, it's full size man. But it's not a man. Like at this point, I'm like, oh, okay. You're a man. You're a badass big black guy. You're gonna whoop ass. Okay, I can get behind that. But no, it looks like a fucking something to be walking around the Macy's Day Parade. It's got it's the same thing, it's a doll. But it's like Life size. It's like, you know, six foot tall with the fucking smile and it's all made out of fabric and it looks fucking stupid. And the first thing that it does is it kills the black girl. Like, the bitch is trying to leave and somehow the door slams down with the fucking face with the teeth and it's like, bah! And it severs her in half at her fucking abdomen. And that is where I said, bye, bye. This movie sucks. Because that's fucking retarded. That is stupid. And I don't want to lower my IQ anymore. I do enough drinking to do that shit. Now, I would have kept watching the movie. It would have been a better story if, and this is a big if, well, not a big if. It was just, it, I was in, I was on board on my way. This is fucking terrible acting and everything. I kind of, I mean, I like the message so far, sort of. You know, white people were racist. We get it. Um, but then you do that to fucking just, sorry, that's LMFAO stuff right there. It's like laughing my ass all the way to the goddamn bank. That's the kind of stuff. It's just like ah, I can't, I can't do it. I don't want to watch this shit no more. I've already paid for it, and at this point, if I'm not talking about it to someone, to anybody at all, then I'm wasting my money. <laughs> you know, I don't turn movies off very often, and this one gets one out of ten stars for me. One being the lowest because no one gets a zero. That's no one gets a ten. No one gets a zero. It gets a one, and that's I haven't given a movie a one since I don't even fucking know when. And it, the only reason why it gives me a, I give it a one is because it insults my integrity to the point where I feel like being racist <laughs> a little bit. And I'm like, you are racist as fuck. Do you want me to be the same way? I don't. But you're insulting my integrity. So I turn it off so I don't have to hate this movie any more than I already do. Who knows? Maybe the next couple scenes are like Creep Show. Like the reviews I've read, they're like, oh, Spike Lee's version of Creep Show. No. <laughs> no, Creep Show. Was actually good. It had Stephen King one one of the little stories. I mean, one one of them had to do with uh, it had Native American thing, American Indian deal, right? The old wooden Indian. I'm sure the Indians back then were like the ones that were like were like ah, oh, they're like ah, oh, no, this is racist. It's like it's no more racist. It's way less racist than the shit that I just watched because he kicked ass. <laughs> And he didn't change shape. He was a big wooden Indian guy. He was Kalijah, pretty much, or whatever. The old song that they used to have. The old country song. You know, you had these... Uh, I don't know if you ever seen Creep Show or not. Maybe it was the second one. I don't know. But yeah, like, these people come in, and they're just like, they robbed this dude. Good old white guy. Running a little thing. You know, like a country store. Kind of like a Trader's Joe's or some shit. And uh, <clears throat> they come in and they they rob him and murder this dude. And Kalijah doesn't change shapes. He doesn't turn into a dinosaur or a big giant Indian. He was just a, still a wooden motherfucker throwing tomahawks, killing these motherfuckers. This is like, hell yeah, fuck those guys. This is fucking cool. And, you know, I mean, it was a good story. What they did in this movie to start it off with is fucking stupid. The rest of the stories might be great. Let me know. I ain't gonna watch this shit. 
Like, whenever they kill, the first person to go is always the black person. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Like, Spike Lee, you're being racist as fuck right now because you always, the stereotype is the black person is always the first one to go in a horror movie. And maybe he's like, ha, 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 that's what I was trying to do. I'm like, ha, 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 you're a fucking racist piece of shit. So, anyways, uh, Test from the Hood 2, uh, uh, produced and directed by St Spike Lee. Ugh, I almost said Spike Jones. Spike Jones would be whatever of a choice. You could probably get anybody to make this movie. It'd be better. <laughs> I wanted to like it so bad, too. Anyways. This is Wayne Evans signing off on the John Wayne Show for a uh, review for this shitty movie. And uh, I'll see you on the flip side. Don't watch this unless you want to be asleep in like an hour. Bye-bye. <laughs>